PFL Europe this Thursday morning slash evening. Of course, morning over here in the States and then Thursday night over in Europe. In the main event, Cedric Dumbe takes on Bisingar Cham Sudanov. It's a very tough fight. Two undefeated fighters, both from France. Cham Sudanov 7-0 and a real step up in competition for Cedric Dumbe in the co-main event. Um, Lazy King takes on Jack Grant. Uh, Let's just be real with that fight. I think Lazy King should be fighting tougher opponents, but that's the co-main event. And then, of course, with the PFL Europe season getting underway, you've got the welterweights and the lightweights on this card for PFL Europe 1. Interesting to, interested to see how the PFL does run things because obviously the season format is coming back. I guess the PFL is only doing uh, 70s and 55s, I assume, for PFL Europe this time around. No women's flyweight, no 205, obviously, because... Um, Jacob Neto, I believe, is fighting for the regular PFL season, and Dakota DeJiva is fighting for the regular PFL season as well. So I guess the way the PFL is doing this is the winner of whoever wins PFL Europe gets to go to the actual PFL season. So that's what we've got going here. We've got 14 fights on this card, and folks, if you haven't yet, though, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below for some more MMA here on the channel. Yesterday, we posted our UFC 299 predictions. Link is, is, link is in the description down below, and of course, PFL here tonight. PFL, Bellator, UFC coming at you every single week here on the channel. So first, the 14, we start things off here. Just announced literally like an hour ago in the heavyweight division, we've got Mikhail Grug taking on Islam Marsov here. And again, for some of these undercard, um, you know, some of these undercard fights, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to take that much time on them because let's, let's just be honest, some of these Fights are set up for certain fighters to win, and, you know, I don't, I'm not going to say I know the most about European regional, regional MMA. I know most of the fighters up on the main card, but some of these guys in the undercard, I'll be honest with you, I'm not the most familiar with. It's not like American regionals where, you know, I know the guys in Fury, I know the guys in K CFFC, I know the guys all in those, in, or in CES and all those promotions, right? So, a little bit different here with um, PFL Europe, but we've got Mikhail taking on Islam at Masarov here. Um, two heavyweights, you've got, for Mikhail, uh, three straight wins. He's got back-to-back -back wins over in Aries FC, picking up a big win over Marcos Matos in his last fight. It's a good win, he wins it by first round knockout. He takes on Islam uh, Marsov in this fight, and I think Mikhail should win. You look at Marsov, this is a guy who's 2-0, and one win in Aries, one win in Dynamite MMA. It's just the strength of opponent has been better for Mikhail so far, um, and he, appears to be the favorite going into this one. Again, fight was just announced. He's 3-1 and one taken on the 2-0 Islam here. Um, but again, I'm taking Mikhail just because he has been, he has shown more experience. He's an MMA factory guy, obviously. I would say the most well-known camp over in Paris or in France. That's the home of Fernand Lopez, who's the head coach. You've got Cyril Ghan, Nasrin Imava, Francis Ngannou once was there. But all of the main French fighters or the big French fighters do fight there. To their Lapis fights there or fights out of there. Uh, Lazy King fights out of there. Um, again, Alain Badeau, if you consider him a somewhat big French fighter. But again, all the big French fighters that you see primarily come out of this gym and that is where Mikael is from. I expect him to win and I expect him to take it by first round knockout. And our next fight takes place in the middleweight division. You have got Younes Najid taking on Kevin Dell. I mean, the records kind of speak for themselves. You know, Younes Najid is six and five, okay, but he's taken on Kevin Dell, who is four, seven, and one. Originally, a fight is scheduled for a month ago on Hexagon MMA, which is a French regional promotion. It got scheduled to this PFL card, um, which is interesting. Um, but Najid should win the fight. Um, you know, he's, he's taken on a four, seven, and one guy here. Kevin Dell, I mean, I know Najid is six and five, but you just look at things here. Najid did lose three of his first four fights. He's won two in a row. Again, not against the best opponents, and he has wins over guys who don't even have, have topology pages. But he's taken on a guy here in Kevin Dell, who's nicknamed the Octopus, who is four, seven, and one. Yeah, this doesn't really bode well, I think, for Dell at all. And I think Najid should get a submission here because Kevin Dell has been submitted four times in his professional MMA career. He's been knocked out twice. He only has one fight that he's lost that has gone the distance. And for Najid, this is a guy who has lost five times by submission in his own right, but he has been able to get submissions in the past. Whoever wins this fight is going to be apparent who the better grappler is. I think Najid is the better grappler. Um, again, there is a reason they set him up for a fight against a 4-7-1 fighter. Najid should take it by first round sub. Let's go into our next one here. 
We've got Mark Ewan taking on Andreas Binder in this one. This is a good fight because for you, and this is a guy who's coming off his win over in Bellator in September of last year, and he's taken on Binder, who is eight and two, coming off three straight wins as well. This is a very good card here, or fight here on the undercard, and you'll see again. PFL is getting some of these Bellator fighters. It's interesting seeing how they are splitting up, you know, the Bellator roster amongst their own. Obviously, some fighters like a Corey Anderson is staying with the Bellator brand for now as he's going to be fighting on the Bellator card next week. And you got fighters, you know, like we're going to see later on this card, Kane Musa taking on um, uh, Jakob Kazuba. Musa, of course, the former Bellator guy. It's just interesting the way that they're spreading things out. Daniel Scatizzi is a guy who fought in Bellator as well. He's on this PFL card also. Um, but for Ewan, again, he's a guy who has fought once in Bellator. He is a Scottish-born fighter. He's 5-0. and He's expected to go out here and win the fight. However, I think it is a tough opponent. I think Andreas Binder is good. This is a guy who owns an amateur MMA victory over Ian Machado Gary back in 2018. Yeah, that is Ian Machado Gary's one amateur loss. His one loss in all of mixed martial arts is to Andreas Binder. I think this is a very tough opponent for Mark Ewan in this fight. I think this is going to be a razor thin fight for as long as it does last, but I think the power of Ewan is going to overcome whatever Binder throws back his way. I think it's going to be close until the finish happens. I really do think it is. I think you're going to see primarily a stand up fight. Both these guys are more than willing to engage in a striking battle and it should be a good fight. Ewan is a pretty big guy, I would say, for 155 pounds. Bender, though, um, fights at 185. This fight is at 55, but Bender's last fight, I believe, was at 85, right? No, it was at 55. I don't know why on Topology says he's, he's an 85-pounder. His last fight was at 55. Before that, he was at 70, so he has cut down to 55. Since then, he won a fight for the Levels Fight League Lightweight Championship against Aiden Lee, went four rounds, ended up picking, picking up a victory in the fourth. He was supposed to take on Danielle Scatizzi back at PFL Europe 4 back in December. He was a slight underdog going into that fight. I think Ewan will go in here and pick up the victory. This is not part of of the lightweight tournament. I assume if someone has to pull out of the tournament, then this fight will of course step in, or the winner of this fight will step in, but taking Mark Ewan to pick up the victory, um, I think he's the all around better fighter on the feet. Again, this is a guy that the PFL is gonna wanna push. He's undefeated, he throws a lot of power. I like him to take this one by first round KL. Let's go now to our next one here. This is an interesting one here to start off the PFL's welterweight division. We have got Tomas Langowski taking on Florum Zendeli. Yeah, so this one's interesting because I'm taking Zendeli by first round knockout. However, both these guys are just very unproven because of where they come from. I'm not, you know, I'm not crapping over re certain regional MMA promotions, but it's just, you don't know what you're going to get out of a guy who's coming off of regional Polish MMA, who's six and four, taking on a fighter who is seven, one and one, who is trained by Peter Sabata and, you know, has, has, been, has been picking up wins in regionals in Germany as well. Like, it's just, I don't know. I don't know what to get out of German regional MMA and Polish regional MMA because sometimes you get really good prospects and sometimes you don't, right? So big question marks around this fight. So take everything here with a grain of salt. I'm going to base this pick though off of who has seen better results as of late and it's Florum Zendeli by far. Now you can say the level of opponent isn't the greatest and he's fought the same guy back to back after he had a draw the first time in 2023 then fought the guy again and beat him by TKO in the fourth round of a five round fight um, over an NFC. His one loss is a knockout back in 2021, but Langowski has been has been stopped so many times in there. He's been knocked out, he's been submitted, and that's why I kind of think Zendeli's gonna be able to go out here and pick up the victory. Langowski does not have a ground game. However, again, Zendeli's not the type of guy that I think is gonna go down there. He has a couple submission wins in the past, but as of late, it has been more of the striking out of Zendeli that has won him fights. But Langowski's been subbed, you know, in a minute 45 seconds. 43 seconds back in 2023 he has been knocked out as well um he can strike langowski is going to put, put up a fight on the feet however i think zendeli is the all-around better fighter both on the feet and both on the ground um i'm interested to see what the odds are going to be for this fight because i don't believe it, it's hard to get odds for pfl europe just because some books don't even like offer it um i can try to find on best fight odds but i don't even know if they're on here right now yeah i don't believe they are um I'm doing this on the spot here but okay i've i guess with the some odds no yeah i can't even i can find old pfl europe um odds but i can't even find anything for this week um just because again and pfl doesn't really do the greatest job promoting their cards i'll be honest with you um 
they do a better job than Bellator. I know this, and I know this is going to be a big deal in France. Don't get me wrong. This has been this has been sold out for a while. It's just that in the states, they don't really make the biggest deal out of this. I believe the last card. Um, I mean, PFL in the past has had troubles even broadcasting this in the states. I mean. I legally stream it, I'll just be honest with you. Um, but, like, so that's not a problem for me, but, like, you know, like, finding ways to stream this in America is difficult, which, like, I don't even know why you go to that length, make this available to everyone, put this on ESPN+, Plus. I'm sure people would watch it. Um, but anyways, going back to this one, again, two very unknown fighters. I'm going to take uh, Macedonia's own and Flora Sindeli to take this one. Again, though, take it with a grain of salt. This one, though... I feel like I have a better read on it, but I think Daniel Skatizi can win this fight against Alexander Chizov in this one. I think Skatizi can win, but it's just been such a mixed bag to, a bag of results for Skatizi. Um, I don't know, because okay, Chizov didn't look didn't look great in his fight against Duque. His first fight in the PFL Europe last year in the summer in July, he loses it. But Duque is not horrible. This is a guy who's won two straight fights since beating Chizov um, back in July of 2023. But he gets Daniel Skatizi in this one. Skatizi is interesting because he's been around Bellator for a long time, right? I mean, 2019, he makes his debut, he loses to Alfie Davis. He comes back, wins back back fights against Gavin Hughes and Brian Hui. He loses to Vladimir Tokov, beats David Gallon, and then loses to Histenko in his last fight. Um, and now he gets Chizov. He was again booked against Bender on that PFL Europe card in December. That fight falls through. And now here Skatizi is. He's fought Charlie Leary in the past. He's lost. He lost to Gerard Huswain Al Suwali. He's even lost to Marvin Vittori back in 2015 over in Venator against Skatizi, an Italian MMA product. It's just been such a mixed bag of results. He's an SBG Ireland guy now, but. I don't know. I'm going to take Chizov to win the fight. I'm not very confident with it, though. I think Skatizi could definitely break the chin here. I'm not going to lie. And I know Skatizi hasn't gotten a knockout win in a while, but I just think on the feet, Skatizi does have a chance. Chizov, you know, I do like his striking more than Skatizi. That's why I think he's going to win the fight. But I wouldn't be surprised if Skatizi does, you know, shock him with the power here a little bit. Um, just because, again, it, the guys that Chizov has fought have not been the greatest. He has a win in PFL back in 2022. He won it by Rene Kachok against Omar Hussein by second round again, Rene Kachok. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Because again, Skatizi has fought the way better fighters. I think this is, you know, I think this should be around even odds on topology, at least on the picks. Why he's got 90% going with Chizov, 10% going with Skatizi. Don't look at that. I think there's definitely a chance Skatizi can win the fight ever so slightly. I'm going with Chizov to take it here just because against Skatizi has been so 50 50 um, to the point where I don't trust him to win a fight here. But he's, you know, one, 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 loss, one, 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 loss, one. It, he is due for a win here, technically. I think he's going to lose, but I think this is going to be really close. I think Skatizi does offer a lot going to Chizov's way. He's well experienced in Bellator and fighting with the Bellator brand since 2019. This is going to be a very interesting fight here for the PFL's lightweight division. I think Chizov wins, but again, I'm not that confident at all in this pick. Let's go to our next one, though, here. Connor Hughes taking on Antal on on, on Ball in this fight. Excuse me. Connor Hughes, though, 8-1. He's expected to win this fight, at least I think. Um, he's taken on a guy here in Ball who did win on the PFL Europe last year. Um, one of the PFL Europe cards, he won by second round TKO, given he was fighting a guy who was 9-5-1 and at the time. Um, and the same guy fought Connor Hughes in Connor Hughes' last win. So they share a common opponent. Uh, Hughes got him out of there in the second round, and same did uh, Antal Antali as well. He got him with the finish in the second round, and Hughes beat uh, Sebas Santana Guedes by TKO at the end of the second round. The fight was over at the, at the end of that round. Um, Hughes does have two fights over in PFL Europe. The first one being a loss to Dylan Tuck by unanimous decision. Tuck is a guy who is not returning, and he has a win over Yazid Kuchain as well. And we're going to see Kuchain later on in this card. He's lost to Jakob Kasuba as well. Um, but for Hughes, again, this is a guy who's 1-1 one one in the PFL. You look at his fights outside the PFL, they're against not the best guys. He's got a win over a guy who's 6-12, and 12, you know, 0-0. He's got wins over all right guys as well, though. Everton Cruz was 4-0 at the time when he fought him, but since then, Cruz hasn't fought. And he's taken on Ball here, the Siberian Tiger, who won fight since 2020. He's interesting. It is that win in PFL Europe, but how much weight can we put on that when, they're take, when he was taking on a guy in Sebas who you know, it hasn't looked good at all in the PFL. So I don't know what to make of this. Ball was a guy who, you know, was went on a winless streak, a four fight winless streak, given one was a no contest, one was a draw and two were losses. Um, 
but I think Hughes should be able to win this fight. I think Hughes does have the advantage on the ground and the feet. I think this one is pretty evenly matched. Um, Ball has been caught on the feet before. Connor Hughes, you know, has not been finished just yet. Hughes is still coming into his own though. Still a very young guy for the sport, 26 years old. Ball gonna be 31 for this one. I think Hughes is gonna take it. I'm, I guess, you know, I just, I don't know what to expect because both these guys have beat the same guy and Hughes has lost to Dylan Tuck. So I'm going to take Connor Hughes. I think he can take it. Um, and I'll take him by unanimous decision. So let's go to our next one now. We go now to the welterweight division and our fight here is between uh, Marianne Dimitrov taking on Kartal in this fight. Pretty evenly matched fight, but again, two guys who I think have a lot of question marks around them because you don't know what you're gonna get out of some of these regional fights with Dimitriov coming out of Bulgaria, with Kartal coming out of Austria, you know, and Kartal's fought former UFC named David Zawada in the past two fights ago. David Zawada got him out of there in five minutes. It was a doctor stoppage at the end of the first round. And Zawada's a guy who has since fought in the PFL, given he's lost two fights to Carlos Leal and to Magomed Magomed Karimov. And you just saw Leal last night, or I think two nights ago, picking up a big first round knockout victory. He's a current free agent. I wouldn't I'd be surprised if the PFL doesn't re-sign him, or if not, I think you'll probably see him get a shot um, on the Contender Series, likely, this year. Before um, Kartal losing to Zawada, since then picking up a victory over Andre Ricardo by unanimous decision. He's taking on Marian Dimitriov in this fight, and for Dimitriov, who we do have as the winner here, is coming off of an M his last MMA fight was a loss for the CFFC middleweight championship, uh, or sorry, the Cage Warriors middleweight championship against Christian Leroy Duncan. And Christian Leroy Duncan's a guy who in the UFC is now three and one, picking up a huge win by second round knockout against Claudio Ribeiro, or TKO win against Claudio Ribeiro. Got that pick around the money, said second round knockout or second round TKO for CLD in that fight. But since then for Dimitriov, he has not fought mixed martial arts. He's been fighting custom rules bouts. He's been fighting bare knuckle. He's had two back-to-back -back BK, he's had a BKFC fight in his last one, um, winning by unanimous decision, which is great um, because BKFC does run cards over there in Europe as well. And Dimitriov was in the main event winning by, winning by unanimous decision. Um, but again, you implement mixed martial arts and that's kind of what has been, you know, the pain for Dimitriov so far as he's been a professional fighter, two losses by submission. The striking is fine, and I think that's what you're going to get at Kartal as well. You're probably going to see a striking fight out of both these guys. I think Dimitriov wins. He's been active with his boxing stuff, and now he comes into this mixed martial arts fight. I don't think we're going to see much grappling going on in this one. Um, again, losing to Christian Leroy Duncan, no shame in that. He got caught with a spinning elbow and lost. But again, CLD is a very good fighter. And for Kartal, again, coming off the loss to Zawada, the win over Ricardo after that, I think Dimitriov does look in, to be in better shape going into this fight. And I think he should be able to win. So give me Dimitriov to take the win by second round TKO. Let's go to our next one here. Back in the lightweight division, we've got a pretty sizable favorite here. This fight is not part of the season, but... We've got Patrick Haraboa taking on Claudio Pacella in this fight for Patrick. 1-0 professionally, but a very lengthy amateur career. 21-6 uh, as an amateur. He picked up his first win in January in the professional MMA ranks, beating a guy over in AEF, which is a promotion over in France. He beat a guy who was 2-5 and five at the time, a Serbian fighter, like he was supposed to by first round knockout. Now getting the step up in competition in Claudio. Again, this is a setup fight. The PFL is doing this to get Patrick Her Habaroa some wins. Um, yeah, this is kind of what this is. Um, the you know Bellator does this a lot. PFL does this. This fight should be a pretty expected first round knockout for um, Patrick in this fight. I think the Belgian fighter should be able to win. I don't think he's going to have much problem beating Claudio Pacella. I know Pacella has had three professional, or sorry, four professional fights, but look at the guys he's beat. 1 0, 2 and 1, lost to a guy who's 1 0, just beat a guy who's 3 and 3. Not the best fights. And again, we say it all the time. What are we going to get out of random regional promotions in Italy or random places here in Europe? I don't know. Again, this guy was fighting at the Jackpot Cafe over in Italy a couple fights ago, and now he's here on the PFL stage. Habaroa should win the fight. I'll take him to win it by first shot knockout again there, trying to give this guy some wins, and this should be the final fight of the prelims. Habaroa is going to take it by first round knockout. Let's keep on moving to the main card. Yassin Najid taking on Danielle Miseli in this fight. For Najid, the French-born fighter, 9-4. 
Formicelli 11 and 5 here in the welterweight division for the PFL. Um, you might know Maselli from his last fight with Peter Queeley, ended with an illegal kick, you know, downed opponent. 26 seconds in. It is what it is. But now Maselli is here with the PFL. Najid is a guy who is coming off a loss over in Aries FC, lost to by Rear Naked Joke in the first round. And both these guys kind of just, you know, begs the question why are both of them in this spot on the main card for the PFL? I don't know. Again, Najid is 9 and 4. Maselli is 11 and 5. Uh, you know, Maselli's 2 and 2 in his last four. And same can be said about Yasin Najid as well. He is two and two in his last four. He's actually two and three in his last five. He's 38 years old. Najid will likely try to take this fight down. The stand-up game is pretty much non-existent. And for Maselli, this guy's stand-up game is kind of non-existent, non-existent as well. He's a primary grappler, so you're gonna see just two guys try to submit each other. Um, now, Najid has been finished twice on the ground. Maselli's never been finished. Maselli has lost five times by TKO. That's where all of his losses come from. Najid has been finished twice on the ground and then twice by decision. And that's why I'm going with Maselli in this fight. I think Maselli should be able to pick up the victory. Did make an appearance back in Bellator back in 2016. Who did he lose to? Daniel Scatizzi, who we saw earlier on in this card. Um, but again, it has been an incredibly mixed bag of results for both these guys. Again, you get a fighter who's 11 and five taken on a fighter who is nine and four. Who the hell knows what's gonna happen? I don't understand why both these guys are on the PFL season, um, but it is what it is. Someone's gotta win the fight. I think Maselli is gonna take it. You are going to see two guys just grapple for 15 minutes, or if it gets there, I think Maselli will be the guy that is gonna get the submission. I think he's gonna take it by second round sub. Give me Daniel, Daniel Maselli to win the fight by second round submission. But both these guys, again, older fighters, both of them I believe are 36 years old. So make or break time now in the professional MMA career. Let's go into our next one. Back in the lightweight division, we've got Jakob Kazuba taking on Kane Musa in this fight. So for Kazuba, 11-0, fought in the PFL Europe um, season last year, won the lightweight championship. He is back. He is not progressing onto the actual PFL season. He's staying here in PFL Europe, which is fine. Get him some more wins. The guy is undefeated if you can win back-to-back -back PFL seasons. Yeah, he can be on that, you know, Dakota to Chiva kind of track to go now to the PFL season. But he went 3-0 in the PFL last year, uh, beating uh, Maxime Radu, beating Dylan Tuck, and then beating John Mitchell by TKO in the second round of his last fight. And now he is back at only 28 years old. He now gets a guy who's been around a veteran in Kane Musa, who went 3-3 three three in Bellator, you know, wins over Gorky Karahanian, a loss to... Uh, Thibaut Gauthier in his last fight, lost to Davy Gallon. Again, a mixed bag of results, but it makes sense he winds up here in PFL Europe. However, they gave him the single-handedly, I think, worst matchup for him. And this is the worst matchup for any lightweight that they could draw. I'm surprised Kazuba's so low on the card, but here he is. This is an extremely dangerous matchup for Kane Musa because, you know, Kazuba, I think, can beat him everywhere. I think, you know, he's got... Tremendous control on the ground. He, we've seen an improved ground game out of him. The striking is good as well. Where does Musa win? I, I don't know. I think Kazuba's got him everywhere here. Again, this is a guy who's undefeated. He's only getting better. He went 3-0 in the PFL season last year. I would expect him to win this season as well. Um, if you, yeah, you're looking for a favorite, it's right here. I think, you know, he might see some trouble with some of these other guys. If Connor Hughes can make a run, maybe. The winner of Chizov Skatizi, potentially. But, no, nah, this isn't all Jakob Kazuba um, run here, I think, in the PFL Europe again in 2024. This is one-sided. I think Kazuba really puts it on Kane Musa here, and I think he's going to win the fight by first-round TKO. So on to the next one. We are going to stay in the lightweight division here. This is a tough one for me. Yazid Kushain taking on Ignacio Capella in this one. I'm taking Kuchain. I'm not confident at all, but I'm going to take Kuchain because of the experience. Again, this is a guy who fought in the PFL last year. He won a fight by unanimous decision where he was a dog going into it, and then he lost his second one to Dylan Tuck. He's taking on Ignacio Capella, who is a fun fighter. Don't get me wrong. This guy is fun to watch. He is going to bring it, but the inactivity has been huge. He's not fought in two years. So what Ignacio Capella are we going to get? Last saw this guy at Anthony Pettis FC, the only Anthony Pettis FC I have ever watched. Um, I didn't know it was still, it was still happening. Um, apparently it is. There's a fight card in Indiana uh, next week or this weekend. Really? I, oh, no, that's in April. Never mind. I was going to say like, well, I mean, okay. I mean, still, uh, okay. There was one in September too in Indiana. So for reference, 
I, I'm in Indiana and I did not hear that Anthony Pettis fight night was coming here. So again, I don't know how Showtime FC came to be. Are they still on Fight Pass? I, I don't know, I think they are. Um, but anyways, Capella fought uh, Ago Husick on the first one. Um, I remember this card for the Jacob Kilburn fight because Kilburn was coming off the UFC run and he loses to Lucas Alexander. Alexander, of course, would make it onto the UFC after that and Alexander is one and two. I don't really know if he's gonna be sticking around with the UFC. But anyways, the co-main event is Ago Husick taking on Ignacio Capella. Um, Husick's a guy who at the time, right, was coming off an LFA loss and he's now fought in the PFL regular season too. I mean, he fought Brent Lofnan of all guys um, back in 2022 and then fought Braga in 2023. Now he's fighting BKFC. Um, but for Ignacio Capella, that was his last what, a split decision victory over Ago Husick. And it's been nothing since. So again, a very unproven guy, a guy who does swing hard, does throw a lot of power, is an entertaining fight. But what are we gonna get out of him against a guy in Yazid Kuchain who, again, has seen a mixed bag of results, but you know what you're gonna get out of him. He's going to be a guy that's gonna stay in the fight. He's not gonna blow you away with power. He's not gonna blow, blow you away with anything, but he's always gonna be there for the full 15. And it's a guy who has remained very active in the past, right? Something that we haven't got out of Ignacio Capella. I mean, since Capella's last fight, I believe Kuchain has fought like, six times um okay that was an over exaggeration four but still he's fought four times since capella's last fought that's kind of big right so i'm taking yazid kuchain, kuchain to win the fight again i'm taking the experience i'm taking the activity i know the losses aren't great he got subbed in his last fight in the second round but i don't really think there's going to be a submission in this fight if he can avoid the power striking of capella and get out the way of the big shots he should win the fight i believe kuchain's going to be an underdog going into this fight this is the underdog i think you want to take if you're going to take one on this card just because again what are we going to get out of the inactivity out of capella i do not know i'm going to take gazi kuchain we're going to hope he can you know if he's going to win he's going to outpoint capella if he loses he probably he's probably going to get knocked out i'm going to take yazid kuchain though to edge out a decision i think he can stay in the fight for the full 15 and i'm going to take him to take this fight and move on to the next round okay on to our final regular season bout here in the welterweight division we've got ibram man taking on um Chakina Noso Pedro in this fight. So you've got the fighter from fighting out of the Netherlands, originally from Angola in Pedro, taken on Man, who is fighting out of France, originally though from Gambia. And for Man, this is a guy who is on a five fight winning streak. He's won back to back to back to back fights over in Aries FC. His only loss in a while since 2020 as against Nurlston at Ruzbayev, who, if you know who he is, he's a guy who's in the UFC now. He beat Bruno Fajeda in his first fight. He's going to be fighting uh, Cedric, Cedric Dumas in his last fight. I think he's going to beat Dumas. I don't, I don't know. That's kind of a mismatch. I think that's in the Apex. No, it's in Atlantic City. Is Dumas even fighting? Because he had the whole DUI thing. I don't know. Or was it DUI? I don't know what happened with Dumas. I'll be honest. Something bad happened. Anyways, um, for Ibram Man, though, the loss to Ruzboyev, and then he's got a loss as well to Alan Amadovsky. If you know Amadovsky, a former UFC name, he went 0-4 in the UFC, ended up that ended that run by losing to Joe Pfeiffer, lost to Jotko, John Phillips, Joe Holmes. They're not the best losses, but how did Amadovsky get into the UFC? He beat Ibrahim Man by knockout in 12 seconds at Bellator 212. Yeah not an ideal fight but since then again man has won five in a row he did trade wins and losses and he's a pretty sizable favorite here against chiquina noso pedro who i would say is very unproven a guy coming off a win in brave which is great but then before that i mean wins in nfc which is a which is a regional over in germany i mean if you look at his last if you look at his fights since december of 2021 the guy's three and three shows you some of the talent pool here at pfl europe let's just be honest with ourselves i think ibrahim man should win he should win this fight he does have way more power i believe you've seen him recently in aries he got a big win um he won knockout of the night back in march of last year picking up a head kick knockout win parlayed that with the decision victory two months later he won a fight before that by submission against yasin najid who again is on this card as well um so i am going to take ibrahim man he's 34 years old but really coming into his own i do believe at this point of his career and for noso pedro a guy who is unproven and should be considered kind of a walk uh, no, a pushover for the gambian fighter here and ibrahim man so give me Mondo win the fight by first on knockout. I would say this is a guy who, if he can really put it together, is going to be one of the favorites in this welterweight division because the welterweight division for the PFL Europe season is very weak.
it is very weak and it makes you wonder why is the lazy king not in it because he could just win the world championship over here with pfl europe i mean i don't i don't understand it i don't understand why the lazy king's not in the season he's 17 and 1 i guess it's maybe because they're trying to save him for the actual pfl season eventually but it doesn't seem like it's going to be the case this year but you know I'm not even going to try to pronounce Lazy King's last name. I can never get it right. It's Abdul. Ab okay, I'll try it. Abdurgamiyev. It's, I, I butchered the hell out of that, but I'll just call him the Lazy King because that's what he is. The guy's undefeated since, um, what, his last loss was back in 2019. I mean, he's on a huge winning streak. The one loss is to draw Hussein Al Sawali, but the guy has been dominant. He's been absolutely dominant. He is a tremendous ground fighter, 12 submission victories. And, you know, I, I watch, or I, knew of lazy king because of his wins in aries um the first aries card i ever watched he was the main event of uh, i believe when was that that was 2021 i believe uh no 2022 when he won the vacant championship uh, when he won by inverted triangle in the first round i mean he was a minus 1000 favorite going to the fight but still it was a big signing for the pfl i don't know why the ufc just didn't take a flyer again like why did they do it why didn't they take doom bay i don't know before lazy king he's picked up one win in the pfl it's a win over brad wheeler by first round submission he was a minus 1200 favorite Again, Wheeler was a guy who was 18 and 13 going to the fight. It made sense that Lazy King would walk all over him. He's going to walk all over Jack Grant as well, though. Jack Grant's a guy who, you know, just hasn't been all that active. One fight since 2021. It's a win over in Brave. He won by an armbar with the second left in the fight. But other than that, I mean, really, he's got losses against well-known fighters. Don't get me wrong. He's lost Ian Machado Gary back in 2021. He lost to Jai Herbert back in 2019 for the Cage Warriors Lightweight Championship. Um... But again, he's been put in this spot to lose. Lazy King's going to walk all over him. Watch the Lazy King fight. He's got really good grappling, really good wrestling. He's going to go in there. He's going to look for the finish. Again, he's an MMA factory guy. He's going to go out there and pick up the victory. That is, if you want a lock of the card with at a minus probably 900 favorite, I would assume he's going to be. That's what it is. He's not going to lose. He'll win the fight by first round submission. Now, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. In the main event, Cedric Dumbe taken on an undefeated French fighter who is 7-0, Bisingar Chem Sudanov. This is difficult for Dumbe. I think it is. I think this is the toughest task of his career. However, Chem Sudanov is very young in his career. He is, you know, I mean, he's got more professional MMA fights than Dumbe. Obviously, Dumbe has had more combat sports experience with all of his kickboxing and glory and whatnot. But Chamsudinov is decent, and this is a guy who can strike as well. However, you know, the way you're going to beat Doom Bay is going to be with grappling. I think that's, the, you know, obviously, right? I mean, Doom Bay is a kickboxer, and he's going to dominate a lot of these guys on the feet. Like, you saw after Jason Jackson beat Ray Cooper III over on the PFL Bellator card in Saudi Arabia, he called out Cedric Doom Bay, and the announcers were like, oh, yeah, that would be great. No, no, I don't want to see that. Because, again, what would happen? If Cedric Dumbe fought Jason Jackson, Jason Jackson would take him down to submit him in under two minutes, or Jason Jackson just beat his head in on the ground. Keep giving Dumbe fights like this. And I don't think that Chum uh, Studenov is going to be the dominant wrestler that's going to try to take down Dumbe because that's really not what Chum Studenov does. Now, he's going to be representing MMA Factory going into this fight, and he is a pretty hyped up prospect against 7 0. That's why I thought it was a little bit interesting that the PFL made this matchup. This is a guy who's undefeated in, Air in Aries. He's 4 0. In his last fight for Aries FC, he was the main event, and he won it by knockout in the second round, given it was against. A guy who, you know, an older fighter who fought in the UFC a while ago. He's a fight against Charles Oliveira back in 2010 in uh, Efrain Esquero. Um, this guy made his UFC debut. If you look all the way back at UFC 141, Brock Lesnar, Alistair Overeem, the main event. He fought Bellator 55. That main evented, um, I don't even know, uh, Alexis Villa and Marcos Galvo. I mean, come on. Like, he beat a guy who was way past his prime. Um, who's 38 years old from Mexico. But again, Chamsudinov does what he needs to do in that fight. He finishes him by knockout in the second round, by TKO in the second round. Um, he's good. He is good. And I'm going to be interested to see if he looks to wrestle against Doombay. Will he look to get the fight down? Because if he does, it's trouble. Now, Chamsudinov is not that much of a wrestler. He will do it. He will tie up with you. He has done it in fights in the past in Aries. He has wrestled. And that's why it's a little bit concerning for Dubay. It is not, I, would, I wouldn't I would say it's the only part of his offense, obviously, but he will do it. 
And he is a much tougher fight for Doom Bay than Jordan Zebo was. And Zebo was a guy who, again, was primarily a striker. I would say Shamsudinov is that as well, but Shamsudinov will work you in the clinch. He will push you up against the fence and he will look to take you down. He'll try to wrap a body. He'll try to drag you down. That's why I think it's a difficult fight for Doom Bay. I think Doom Bay will still win. Don't get me wrong. I'm going to take Doom Bay by first round knockout. I expect him to be about a minus 300 favorite, maybe 250. I think that's fair. Both these guys are undefeated, though. And again, it's a tough out for both of them. It really is. Doom Bay, though, you'd expect him to win the fight. I mean, you saw his fight against Jordan Zebo. I mean, it was, it was incredible theater going to the fight. I mean, again, that place is, you know, it's, it's sold out. It's in France. Uh, Mbappe is in the front row and Dumbe does his chant. He yells Jordan and the crowd says, you're dead. I mean, it's, it's crazy theater. It's makes you wonder why the UFC just didn't sign this guy in the UFC. You know, they had him booked against Darian Weeks at one point and they said, oh, okay, Dumbe, you fight for 12 and 12. If you give him, if you just give him a little bit more money, maybe he'd be in the UFC right now. But again, they wanted to give him a contender series contract, which is beyond me. But again, Dumbe, the win over Zebo is, is big. Again, he caught the kick, landed a big, I believe it was a big right, and put him down. He was only a minus 200 favorite in that fight. I believe he's going to be around minus 250 for this one, even though I think it's a way tougher opponent. I think it's just, again, people have seen him on the big stage now in the PFL, and he's going to be fighting in France, which, again, is where uh, Bisingar is from as well. But still, I think Dumbay should win, because the way my thought process, process of this, and I hate to get this way when I pick fights, but you think about it as well, though. Why would the PFL book Cedric Dumbay against a guy against the guy that they think he could lose to? Because Cedric Dumbay is their big star, and he's their big French star who sells out big arenas over in France. They gotta expect him to beat Chamsudinov in this fight. I know Chamsudinov is good, but he's only 22 years old and he's very young. Cedric Dumbay, given his limited mixed martial arts experience, has had, you know, at least I believe 30 kickboxing fights, probably more, right? Um, I'm not, I'm not going to pretend like I know much about kickboxing. I know Dumbay's a really good striker though. I know he's a, I know he won the, he won the championship over in Gloria, I do believe. Right. So, um, yeah, like I think they expect him to win the fight. And again, why would they put Cem Sudanov in this spot if they don't think that Dumbay can beat him? I expect Cedric Dumbay to win the fight and he should get it done. I think Dumbay will finish him in the first round. I think it will be a little bit longer, at least in the Zebo fight, there's only nine seconds, but Dumbe, I think, should make light work of Chamsudinov. Chamsudinov, I think, will look to tie up here and look to go to the clinch. I think Dumbe is going to be good enough to break from that, because again, Chamsudinov, most of his takedowns do come from the clinch. It doesn't come from straight takedown attempts. It doesn't come straight from, all right, dropping for the double, looking for, you know, to turn the corner or whatnot, basic wrestling 101. But I think Dumbe is going to be fighting off decently well in the clinch, and he should be able to create some separation and win the fight by knockout. So give me Sajik Dumbe to remain undefeated and beat Faisingar Cham Sudanov by first round knockout. And folks, that will do it for PFL Europe number one here of 2024. I don't expect there to be many PFL Europe cards this year because I think there's only four. Yeah, because there's one regular season fight, another regular season fight, playoffs, and the championship. So it's not going to be that extensive of a PFL season this year, PFL Europe season this year, but it of course, the PFL regular season for the United States comes back April 4th over in San Antonio, Texas. And then, of course, Bellator is back next week. And then, of course, the UFC is basically running every single week this year because got to fulfill that ESPN, ESPN Plus contract and put them in the apex every single damn week. So, folks, thank you all for watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe button down below for more. Make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy the video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button again if you did enjoy. And make sure to comment if you do, do, do disagree with any of the picks. Folks, thank you, folks, thank you for watching. And Mamba forever.